Hello everyone. Today we're going to be talking about and taking a general look at setting up price lists in Epicor. Although most of this presentation will show the process in Epicor 10, some areas are also relevant for Epicor 8 and 9, but may have a different screen or process that is similar. So this slide shows the general topics we'll be discussing today, the types of discount pricing, price groups, how to set them up and what they are, price lists, again how to set them up and what they are, price list hierarchies, which order the um, pricing is applied in Epicor, and connecting the price lists or price groups to parts or customers, and then the import and export process for pricing and we will show examples along the way. The following slides will go into each of these topics in more detail. So the types of discount pricing. Epicor includes two basic types of discount pricing. Either quantity-based discounts or value-based discounts can be set up or you can set up both. Quantity discounts are calculated first and then value breaks are calculated using the new amounts. Quantity-based discounts look at the quantity on the order line and compare it to the quantity breaks that you set up on your price list. Epicor then applies the discount that matches that quantity break. For all of the uh, discount pricing, Epicor uses the pricing hierarchy to search for the ver first available price list. Once it finds a price list for the parts or customer uses the unit price for that quote or order detail line. Value-based discounting takes the total amount on the sales order or quote and compares it to the value breaks set up in a price group. Epicor then applies the discount that matches the value break. Price groups. Here we outline the steps needed to set up a price group and basically price groups can be set up in quote management or order management in the setup submenus under each of those menu items. Price groups can have any name that you assign to them. You can choose any or all product groups to assign to each price group. The price groups that you set up can be quantity based or value based discount pricing or both once these selections are made, you will then need to add the details for each price group regarding the value breaks on the value breaks tab. Then finally, you'll need to make sure that parts you set up in part maintenance screen have product groups assigned to them if you want them to utilize the price groups. The parts need to have product groups that are included in your price group list of product groups. So here we show we set up St. Nick's price group. Since he's almost on the way, the options to use both quantity and value based discounts are selected. On the right we can see an example of the value breaks for the somewhat naughty elves who only order a thousand dollars of toys. They will get a 10% discount. The nice elves who plan to send out ten thousand dollars of toys get a larger 25% discount for any toys in these product groups. Of course the elves need to make sure that the parts and the part maintenance belong to one of these product groups to activate the group pricing. So the jack-in-the-boxes, dollies, teddy bears, and all other toys need to be one of these product groups to get the St. Nick pricing. Here we can see the name is the St. Nick's price group and the description that it uses both the order-based quantity or order-based value discounts. The product groups selected are shown here on the left. You can either add all the product groups or remove all the product groups by pressing these buttons. And usually what you'll have to do is add all of them 
and then remove specific ones by selecting their rows so that you don't include all of them if you don't want all the product groups selected. And here on the right in part maintenance we show that the group fabricated is selected on this part and the group fabricated is shown in the um, product group list on the price group for St. Nick. So like price groups, price lists can also be set up in quote management or order management in the setup submenus. Price lists are set up in addition to price groups to apply more finite pricing based on the examples shown here. Customers or customer groups. For example, we have the red dressed elves or the green dressed elves, or we could have a group of all elves and promotional. We could have promotional or seasonal pricing. Basically, if the elves can place their orders by November 1st, or they can get a additional pricing if their orders placed for St. Nick's are between November 15th to December 2nd, which is today. Once the price lists are fully set up, they will be the default pricing for quotes and sales orders. All price lists require a start date but they do not require an end date. Here we show our example of a price list that we set up. We set up the pricing for the red elves for the St. Nick's orders. Notice the start date is selected and the end date can be selected but does not need to be. And we're showing the type shows both which allows unit price or discount percent to be entered. And we have an example of each shown here. The discount tabs for parts is similar to the product group, group discounts tab. However, you choose parts to apply the discounts to instead of product groups to apply the discount pricing against. But the grid has the exact same columns of quantity, break, unit of measure code, discount type, and discount percent, and unit price, etc. On the right, we show which warehouses will get this pricing. All warehouses are selected by default, and you can remove some if you do not want them to get the pricing on this price list. This slide shows the price list hierarchies. If you set up several pricing options, price lists and price groups, keep in mind there's a hierarchy that Epicor will follow. Any price list attached to customers, bill to or ship to, which includes parts or product groups on the price list will be the first activated pricing. Otherwise, if no pricing is found at that level, the customer group with a price list attached will be chosen. And if no pricing is found on these two options, the price group pricing for the products groups is used. And as mentioned, that's just setting up the price list or price groups but they really don't have any effect until you connect the price list or price groups. So in order to apply a price list to the customer bill to or ship to, you will need to add the price list to the price list tab in customer maintenance as shown here in the customer bill to. The customer ship to follows a similar process and grid for the price lists. So you should assign all of your Red Elves customers to have Red Elves pricing. To assign a price list to a customer group, you need to use the customer group maintenance menu item and add the price list in a similar way. After the price list is added to the customer group, you then assign a customer group to a set of customers and customer maintenance on the Bill to tab. So you can add pricing for the Green Elves to a customer group and then select all the Green Elves customers to have the Green Elves customer group. To apply price groups to parts, you need to make sure the product groups attached to your price groups are then assigned to each part as needed in part maintenance. 
Make sure the teddy bears, the jack-in-the-box, the dollies, and other toys are all assigned to one of the product groups that were in the St. Nick's price group. So this slide shows how you use the import or export option for price list maintenance. In order to use this option, you need to bring up a price list that you want to work with in price list maintenance. And then you go to the actions menu in price list maintenance to choose either import or export. And the additional window that has the criteria is shown for both import and export. The, the window is the same other than the radio button selected for export when you export or the radio button is selected for import when you're trying to import. You will browse to your file name to where you want to import or export your file name to and um, list your delimiter and the other defaults can stay as is unless you, you find a reason to change them. Use this option if you want to export to Excel for example and use formulas to update your pricing and then import back into Epicor. I hope you found this presentation informative and can put into practice some of these price list options that are available to you in Epicor. Remember to use them in your test environment first so that you can verify you are setting things up correctly and test out how they work. Coda Bears is here to help you with any questions you might have in the future. Thank you for your time.